Hey, Damien here from Cloud Technology Experts. In the previous video, I shared with you how to create a pod using kubectl run command. In this video, I'd like to show you how to create a pod using kubectl create command. Do you remember the differences between kubectl run and kubectl create command? There are three main differences. Number one, when you use kubectl run command, you can only create a pod with just one container. When you use kubectl create, you can specify as many containers as you want to have. Two, when you use kubectl run command, a deployment object is automatically created. Not so with kubectl create, which means with kubectl create, your pods are not being monitored. So each time you delete your pod, they get deleted and they can't be replaced. Thirdly, you need a manifest file written in YAML or JSON syntax before you can create a pod using kubectl create command. And also with kubectl run, you don't need a manifest file. So now we understand that with kubectl create, we can create a multi-container pod. But does that mean we should always create a multi-container pod? No, there are different scenarios where you might want to create a multi-container pod. But there are certain disadvantages you have to be aware of. Number one, when you put containers in the same pod, it means that they are co-located and so you cannot easily spread them across different nodes. Two, remember that containers in a pod share the same fate, so you cannot scale them independently. And thirdly, sometimes you want your containers to be loosely coupled Putting them in a pod makes them to be closely coupled. So what are the best scenarios where you might want to have a multi-container pod? Number one is for performance. For example, if you schedule a Redis catch with a web server in the same pod, it will improve the performance of your application. Number two might be for monitoring situations. For example, you might use one container in a pod to monitor the other container within the pod. Number three might be for logging. Just like in monitoring, you can use one container in a pod to get a login for the other container. These are some of the situations where it makes a lot of sense to ensure that you create a multi-container pod. So now that you understood how to create a multi-container pod, and the advantages and disadvantages of doing that, let's go ahead and use our kubectl create command to create a pod. Remember what I said earlier, to use a kubectl create command, you first must have to create your manifest file. In this case, I have a prepared manifest file, which I will show you. In another video, I will show you how to actually create a manifest file in YAML. So here is the manifest file created in YAML syntax. As you can see here, it says that the, the kind is a pod, which means we want to create a pod. If you look at the spec down here, it talks about the section for containers and it, and it mentions two containers, one for the Redis and the other one for the Nginx. So this manifest file is going to create a pod with two containers. Let's go ahead, create a pod, and then check the containers. kubectl create minus f. Now it says pod redis nginx is created. Let's describe it and see what we have inside. kubectl describe pod redis nginx. Just like in the first video, there are so many sections to this file, but I just want to show you the section under the containers. So you can see here, there, this is a section for the containers. The first one is Redis, and the second one is 
Nginx from here down. So we've seen a multi container pod. Now, if you remember, we said that this pod is not being monitored because no deployment object was created. So let's delete the object and see what happens. kubectl delete pod redis nginx pod redis nginx deleted let's do get, get pod and see what happens now it remains deleted because there's no deployment object it's not going to be replaced again we can check to see there is no deployment object created so this is basically what i wanted to show you in this video first to understand that before you use the kubectl create command you must have ready a manifest file to also understand that with kubectl create you can create a multi-container pod and also that when you delete your pod it gets deleted and it's not being replaced because there is no deployment object created I hope you like this video. If you do, remember to leave a comment, like the video, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more relevant cloud-related videos like this one. Again, Damien from Cloud Technology Experts, and thank you for watching.